Hi, I'm Melissa Shea, President and CEO of the Long Island Real Estate Investors Association. Two decades ago, on a dare, I purchased my first home with no money down. I received $7,000 cash at the closing and earned $200 a month in passive income, all while my tenant was paying the mortgage. Since then, we've purchased over $30 million in real estate and have taught people just like you how to do the same. Go to outoftheratracepodcast.com, register, and let us teach you how to become financially independent through real estate investing today. Hey guys, you're listening to the Out of the Rat Race podcast, the podcast that teaches everyday people how they can become financially independent through real estate investing. Be sure to like and follow our show so that you're kept up to date on all of our new content, which is uploaded between one and three times a week. And with that, let's get into today's episode. So my name is John Shea, and I'm actually by myself today. Uh, This is going to be an unrelated real estate podcast today. It's something that actually happened to me on January 17th. Um, Not very happy about it at all, but I feel it's very important for me to share, especially to this group of people, the listeners out there, because it could happen to you. And I can tell you right now, it's no fun. So basically what happened was it was January 17th. Uh, my wife, Melissa, was actually in Florida, I think, at a uh, exit realty convention. I think it was training or something like that. But anyway, um, it was 1050 at night. I'd gotten the kids to sleep probably like an hour prior to this. And I think I fell asleep watching The Office or one of those stupid shows that I like to fall asleep to. And it was about 1050 at night. My phone rings. So normally that doesn't happen. Melissa's normally asleep. I'm normally asleep. Anybody that's really important to me is normally sleeping. So if I receive a phone call at 10.50 at night, it's probably important. So I get up. I answer the phone. Um, it's a gentleman on the line. It's a 1-800 number to begin with. It's actually uh, Apple Card Services and Goldman Sachs. It's, it's their phone number. So I answer it, and there's a gentleman there, and he goes, Hello, is this John Shea? And I said, Yes, it is. Um, he goes, this is, uh, I forget his name, maybe Ryan with Apple Card Services and Goldman Sachs, uh, fraud prevention. We see some unusual activity on your card. We want you to verify. So I'm like, oh, great. Here we go again. What is it? And uh, they said, if you could look on your phone, you could see there's a $3,500 charge to Walmart that we declined. Did you actually do that? <clears throat> so, you know, I'm trying to like wake up here because I, I had already gotten into a deep, deep sleep. I look at my phone and I see there was a decline for $3,500 for Walmart in like California. So I'm like, no, no, that was not me. I said, it's fraud. You're going to have to mark it off as fraud. Please take it off the account Um, and all this other stuff. And he goes, did you make a charge at, uh, I think it was a hotel like the Hilton in in California. I was like, no, he goes, um, he goes, okay. So I just need to verify some information. Are you John Shea? Yes. Uh, is your social security number? And he said my whole social security number. And I was like, yes, that's it. He goes, date of birth, 12, 11, 80. Yes. He goes, um, do you live at blah, blah, blah address? I'm like, yes, that's my home address. And he goes, you have this credit card on your Apple account. You have this credit card on your Apple account and this one and this one. And I said, yes, those are all cards on my Apple account. He goes, okay. So now that we've established it's you, I need the, the uh, security codes for XYZ credit cards. And I said, ah, you guys normally, you guys never ask for that. And uh, he goes, well, we need to take care of this problem. We're going to need the security codes. So I said, all right, hang on one second. I disconnected the phone. That's the only thing I could think of to do. You know, like I felt like I was being scammed. So I disconnected the phone. I called up and started canceling credit cards. I think I got through one of them. I think I got through like teachers, um, canceled the credit card and he kept beeping in. So after I got off the phone with teachers, um, I answered the phone again in which he said, uh, we must've gotten disconnected. Um, this is John Shea. Yes. You live at this address. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. Went through the whole rigmarole again. He goes, okay you need to give me the security codes for the credit cards. I said, I'm not giving you any security codes for the credit cards. He goes, that's the only way we can get them off of your account. I said, I could take them off the account myself. And he goes, actually, we've put a block on your account. Um, You cannot remove them yourself. And he he goes, why don't you want to give us the, the code? And I said, because you guys never asked for security codes. I said, I don't even know who the hell you are. And he goes, well, what we're going to do is we'll send you a one time code. And if you could read that back to me, 
we could verify, uh, finish verifying your ID. And that's something I'm normally accustomed to, you know, getting the chime across the phone. So I get the chime across the phone from Apple saying, this is your code. And uh, I read it back to him. The second I read that code back to him, I started hearing chiming going off in my ear. And it was me being signed out of every Apple device that I own. My, uh, my iPad, my phone, my computer, um, all of my, I have uh, a bunch of stuff in the house, like the front door lock, the, uh, the doorbell cam, the side door lock. All the lights in the house are like smart Apple lights so I could change the colors and turn them on and off. So we have like one of those smart homes. So I looked and it said I'd been signed out of my Apple ID. So I went to go sign back in on my phone. I hung up with them, went to go sign back in, and it said uh, wrong password. So I was like, oh, great. So I do it again, wrong password. I click the button, forgot password, and, uh, you know, it has a phone number up there to send a code so that you can get the, you know, uh, a reset of the passcode. So basically what happened was I did that and I didn't receive the code. So I look at the phone number again and it only shows you, it shows you the last two digits and it wasn't my phone number. So I was like, maybe this is a bad dream. Let me just go to sleep and I'll figure it out in the morning. So in the morning I call Apple and, uh, they go through this whole thing with me and comes, come to find out that they hijacked my Apple ID. So not only did they change the password, but they actually changed the recovery contact information so that I couldn't get my password back. So I asked Apple, what, you know, what can I do about it? And they said, nothing. <laughs> it now belongs to whoever took it from you. And I said, well, you know, you guys called me from that phone number. I said, it, it is the Goldman Sachs. I had the, you know, it was on my phone. It showed that uh, it was Goldman Sachs and uh, Apple Card Services. So basically what happened was whoever did this spoofed the phone call so they could actually hack the phone number and call you. It could be, it could be a phone line somewhere else in the world and it's coming through as that phone number. So that's where they got me the first time is that I actually thought it was a valid phone call. So <clears throat> on top of that, I started uh, checking into my credit cards because I couldn't access them on the phone anymore. I couldn't see uh, my Apple credit card on the phone. So I called them up and they said, yeah, it was maxed out and you made a payment this morning of about $12,000. And I said, no, I did not. So basically, whoever did this actually charged my credit cards, then drafted from my checking accounts to pay the credit card off and then recharge it again and then began drafting out of other checking accounts that I have to pay that off. Now, not all of my checking accounts have $12,000 in them. So basically, you know, it caused the checking accounts to go on there and all this stuff. So there was a good two hours of me sorting that out just over the phone with them reversing those charges. You know, this is with Apple, um, reversing those charges. And I said, we just need to shut the credit card down. If I have no access to it, I can't do anything about it. We need to shut it down. So they shut the credit card down. Um, I think the balance that was on it was like eight grand. So I had to immediately pay that off in order for them to shut that card down. After that, I had to call the banks um, I had a fight with them and argue with them that the charges that were made on those credit cards were not mine. And, um, I shouldn't be charged the overdraft fees. As a result of that, I had to go to the local sheriff. I had to file a police report, um, which I did. And I had to put this whole thing together on how much money was taken, how much money I've got back. Um, that was a nightmare. I had to close all my credit cards. I had to close several bank accounts. Um, and then the big thing was Apple said, you can never use that Apple ID again, but you have to put a new Apple ID on your phone and your products because technically I couldn't do anything iCloud related um, on my phone, my watch, my laptop, my desktop, anything Apple I couldn't use. Um, the way it's meant to be used. I could only just do basic stuff on it. So I said, okay, I'll create a new Apple ID. 
So I created a new Apple ID through the website, but you have to sign out of every device with your password in order to sign out of an Apple ID. I said, how do we do this? <laughs> Cause I don't have the password and I can't get the password recovery because they changed it. So how do I sign out of all these devices? They said, you have to supply us with the original purchase receipts or a receipt from the, the place where I bought it showing the serial number and the model number of the item that I possess. Right then and there, my Apple Watch, might as well just throw it away. It's a paperweight because I think I got that thing like five years ago. Uh, there's definitely no receipt on that. So that was, that was a waste. Um, my phone, thank God I was able to go through T-Mobile. Um, T-Mobile was able to supply me with uh, the credit, the, the statement, the charge statement of the first month that the phone was on there. And it had the, Apple, the, uh, the serial number on that. Got that taken care of. I bought my computer from a company named B and H. It's a big place in Manhattan. It's like a city block. Um, I found the receipt for that serial number didn't match my computer. So I had to call them up. I had to spend about an hour on the phone explaining everything. And they had to find the records and realize that on the receipt, they had made a mistake and they had to fix that to get me a correct receipt. Um, I had to go around my house and reset every single Apple product. That means, I mean, ceiling fans have like three light bulbs in them. I had to unscrew every light bulb. I had to do this whole reset procedure with all of them. I had to do it with the doorknobs, the, uh, the doorbell, all that stuff. Um, I lost all of my Apple device purchases. So anything I've had this Apple ID for like 13 years. Um, so all of my, everything that I had on the iCloud, which is, you know, short stories that I had written, I was in the process of writing a book, gone, can never recover that. Um, pictures I was able to save because my computer uh, saved my pictures to the hard drive itself. So I was able to pull off every single one of those and put them on a hard drive. And then I was able to transfer, uh, transfer it later. So the pictures were good. Documents to my hard drive, gone. Any app that I had ever purchased that whole time, which, you know, Final Cut Pro is actually a software program that I use to cut and edit videos and all that stuff. That's like a $300 program. Gone. All of the passwords that I had in my keychain, um, if for those of you that don't have Apple products, keychain is basically an iCloud service that stores your passwords. So they could use your face recognition or your thumbprint. Or you could even, if, if you don't remember it and it's not set up for that, you could actually uh, put in your Apple ID password and access all of your passwords. They'll give you access to that. Gone. All my bookmarks, gone. Basically had to start over. Um, I'm missing several con uh, contacts. Subscriptions that I had going through it, like uh, Netflix, Hulu, all that stuff. Um, all gone. So basically what I learned from this is that Apple really does have great security because if something's stolen from you, they won't even let you back in. Um, but on top of that, if you call somebody, if you call the bank and you're talking to them and you need information, then they could send you a code to verify it's you. If they call you and then send you a code, that's the way they're going to get into you. They were trying to sign into my Apple ID and basically, when uh, they went to recover the password, that's when it sent me the code. So they got that code, put it in, changed the password, changed the recovery information, and uh, the rest is history. So this has been an ongoing battle since uh, January 17th. I still have stuff that I'm doing with it. Um, I'll probably never get most of my stuff back. Um, still in credit card limbo, <laughs> so to speak. But it's a cautionary tale because uh, it takes one false statement and you could lose everything you've built. So something to think about. Uh, these people will never give you your credit card numbers. They won't read your whole social security number off to you. They will call you at 1050 at night from a wrong number, you know, spoofed and uh, send you a code. And that's really what you got to watch out for. Um, we are at risk. Everybody's at risk. So sorry, it wasn't the normal thing, but I th thought you guys should hear 
uh, these types of situations. Oh, and it, it goes to be noted that two days after this whole thing happened, I received a, uh, an email from T-Mobile or from a news venue that I go through stating that T-Mobile admits to 37 million people uh, their information being released through a hack in their system. And that information that was given out was names, phone numbers, addresses. So that's, they didn't say social security numbers, but that might be a pretty good indication that the guy called me up knowing my phone number, my name, and my address and gaining my trust. So again, be weary, uh, be careful, and I hope this doesn't happen to any of you guys. Uh, until next time, Happy investing.